Welcome to our first ever Black Golf Directory virtual career fair. Today, I'm hosting our first company, the American Junior Golf Association, better known as AJGA. And I'm very familiar with this organization because I played in the tournaments that they hosted way back in the day. We won't say how far back. Uh, and so I know that this is a great organization that really gets young kids into golf on a competitive level. And so with that, I want to introduce our guests. Um, first with us, we have Lauren Shelley who is the Director of Training and Development for the AJGA. And Lauren is the go-to person. I've known Lauren for quite some time now. She's always at the career fairs, and she's a big part of recruitment for this organization. Our other guest is Kyle Brown. He's a 2018 intern, and I'm excited for you to hear his story, and he will share his testimony as to his experience and what got him into this internship. So with that, I'm gonna kick things off by starting with Lauren Shelley. Hey Lauren, how you doing? Hi Jamie, thanks so much for having us today. We're really excited to just share a little bit more about who the AJGA is, our internship program. And I, like you, am very excited for Kyle to share his testimony and his experiences. Um, he was a great intern back in 2018. Um, and I think everybody will really enjoy listening to his story as it's not ne necessarily the most traditional route in golf. So I think that's a really neat thing for everybody to hear that you don't have to have to have all this golf knowledge or all this golf background to eventually have a career in golf. Exactly, exactly. So before we get into that, can you just share with everyone a brief overview of AJGA and your role in the organization? Absolutely. So the American Junior Golf Association is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the overall growth and development of young men and women who hope to achieve a college golf scholarship through playing competitive junior golf. So in a given year, um, even with a little bit of COVID, uh, we typically run about 120 to 125 national junior golf tournaments all across the country to cater to nearly 7,500 members that are part of our organization that vary from ages 12 to 18. And a lot of them are hoping, hoping to achieve a college golf scholarship, which is great. So we're able to provide those opportunities for the kids, college coaches are able to come out and scout and do all of those types of things. And we also have other recruiting efforts that we can help the juniors with as well. Um, but one of the big things for us as an organization is not just necessarily focusing on the playing opportunities, but also focusing on the growth and development of young men and women. And we carry that into our staff as well. But for our juniors, we teach them how to give an award speech. We do thank you notes, care for the course, Leadership Links is one of our fundraising efforts to, for kids to learn how to raise money to give back to charities, may or may not be golf related. Um, and then we also have a great program called the ACE Grant Program, which is kind of our financial aid version um, to provide kids opportunities to be able to play in golf that may not necessarily have the financial means. So for all encompassing, um, we really want to make this a great experience for all of our junior golfers and anybody that has the talent play at a very high level as well. Um, but for myself at the organization, I've been with the AJJ for almost 13 years now. I started as an intern way back when, if you want to do the math, go ahead. Uh, but I started as a tournament director, ran events um, in my first year, and then moved into our director of recruiting role, and then now into our director of training and development. Um, and I've been on the HR side, leading the charge with our internship program, um, for well over a decade now. And it's definitely a true love of mine. Um, I do have a partner in crime. Her name is Blair Sumner and she is our current director of recruiting. So she works alongside with me in our recruiting efforts and promotion of the internship and making sure our interns are taken care of out on the road. Then I also get to do a little bit of stuff too with um, these recruiting efforts, our diversity and inclusion initiatives, a lot of our fun events that we do for our staff. And then I also focus a lot on the growth and development of our organization um, and how we can help our employees as well as how we can help our juniors. That's great. You guys are doing a lot of work. And so I just want to ask you, Lauren, because I think I know the answer, but are you a golfer? I am not. I came to the AJGA with a knowledge of golf. I grew up in a family that loved sport, loves the game. My grandfather was always watching golf on Sundays. My uncle was a head golf coach in college and in high school. Um, I personally never played. Uh, I was a cheerleader all growing up and just 
kind of had my knowledge of the sport through other means. I so I definitely came to the AJGA without any golf background. I have immersed myself completely in the culture now since I've been here for so long and love everything about it. Um, I still don't play, um, but those are due to injuries that unfortunately I can't overcome. But I love being out on the golf course. Um, and if I do get the opportunity, I'm great on the putting green. That's pretty good. Putting is the most important part of the golf game. That's just how I feel. So with that, can you share with us more details about the internship program? For example, who can apply, what the process is like, et cetera. Absolutely. So we have um, two versions of our internship program, and we'll be able to kind of dive into both of them. We have a traveling internship, and then we have internship opportunities at our headquarters. So for both of them, we have a few different um, requirements. So for our in-house opportunities, we offer those positions in our finance department, player services, and communications departments primarily each year. Um, and most of the time, those opportunities are in the summer. They're typical eight to five, 40 hours a week kind of gig um, where you will work out of our office, which is we're located in Braselton, Georgia, which is just about 45 minutes north of Atlanta. Um, we do pay, pay those opportunities. Um, they are hourly paid. Um, and we do not provide any other luxuries. So no housing, no transportation or anything like that. For those opportunities, um, we do not have any form of age requirements or anything like that. So if you want experience, we welcome them. Um, most of our interns though, however, are typically in that college bracket um, as just to give a little perspective there. But then our traveling internship is kind of the big showcase one. Um, and by traveling means you're out on the road helping us run our junior golf tournament. So we have two seasons. We have a spring and a summer season. Our spring season can typically last anywhere from six to eight weeks, and our summer season can last anywhere from 10 to 14, um, potentially a little bit longer, um, depending upon how the schedule breaks out. So that can vary a little bit from year to year. Um, for these internships, though, you are required to be 21 at the start of the internship. So you may not be 21 when you apply, but you have to be 21 by day one of each internship. So our spring season is a typical mid-March through the beginning of May, and then summer is basically Memorial Day through Labor Day to just kind of give a rough estimate of everything. And those are also paid internships as well. Um, we do cover all of um, your travel, your lodging, and your laundry. Um, we do pay for a majority of the food while you're out on the road. Um, and then those are paid an hourly wage plus time and a half for overtime because with our traveling internships, depending upon the season, um, you'll work well more than 40 hours each week. Okay, so I'm, I'm excited to know that these are paid internships. Now, can you give us an estimate on what the pay is or is it flat rate for anyone doing these internships? Yes, so for the traveling internship, it's $7.25 an hour plus time and a half um, for overtime. So $7.25 up to 40 hours and then time and a half after that. Um, and then for the traveling internship, on average, you're probably working, especially in the summer, for example, anywhere from 50 to 65 hours a week. So um, it is kind of a nice chunk of change um, that you're able to walk away with. And then for our in-house internships, it's $10 an hour but you're working a standard 40 hour work week at the most for those. Got it, okay, that's not bad. And so what, can you explain what the application process is as far as, cause I know you guys have a pretty unique application process. Yeah, absolutely. So our application process is very unique. Um, Right now, our application is currently open, um, and it will be open for our spring application closes on November 13th, and our summer application closes on January 8th of 2021. So there's definitely plenty of time to apply, um, but our application process is relatively standard at the very beginning. Um, you're going to apply online through our website, submit your resume, answer some basic application questions just to kind of give us an idea of who you are. But then myself and a team will go through all of our applicants. Um, it is a rolling process, so we do try to make sure everybody kind of has an update or a decision within 10 days as they're moving um, through the process. Um, the next step after your initial application is to record a virtual interview, which we will send you all the information to do. And the virtual interview can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to record. So we'll prompt you with the questions um, just to get to know you a little bit. And then we'll also have you complete what we call a Wonderlic personality assessment along with those, as those are two standard tools in our hiring process. 
um, from there, um, we will kind of continue to keep watching and our team will get through all of our applicants and we will um, make decisions from there. So we'll be back in touch with you to let you know if you're going to continue to move on or if your time with us um, is not going to continue. For those that do continue on for the spring season, you're, the next step would be an offer, whether you're going to be a spring intern or not with us. Um, for the summer candidates, the next step is being invited to our intern recruiting weekend, which Kyle will be able to kind of give you a little bit more background on that as he was part of that group when he was an intern. But our intern recruiting weekend is a weekend at our office where you go through more interviews, team building activities, getting to know all of the staff at the AJGA and us getting to know you. So it's a nice way for you to really kind of see who we are as an organization and see if this is the right fit for you. And then from there, we make our final decisions. So if you get invited to Intern Recruiting Weekend, it's a huge honor. We only take about the top 110 candidates for the weekend, and then we'll hire about half after that. So the summer just has a, an extra step in the spring. Um, and this year, we're, we're hoping we can do it in person in 2021, um, but we are in the works of planning it virtually. It's just we have to adjust um, based on COVID-19. Got it. And so when you select an intern uh, that gets you know, selected for the job, do they typically stay in the region where they're from or is it they can go anywhere? Yeah, so with our internship, we're gonna have you in a team of eight, for example. And there's two positions that you're applying for. You're either applying for a communications role with us or an operations role. And the communications role is going to be more focused on social media, photography, video, and then the operations is gonna be more of that event management side of things. So rules officiating, getting the course set up from the actual golf course itself to all the logistics like tents and banners and coolers and volunteers and things of that nature. At times, everybody's merging together. So everyone's going to be able to help. Um, but there are two distinct positions within that team of eight. So typically, there are about two communications interns and six operations interns for each team. Now, from a region standpoint, we do, as an organization, break the country up into about six to seven different regions, and we'll have six to seven different intern teams traveling within those regions. So you won't necessarily always get the region that you're from, um, and that's one of the cool things about the internship is we do try to get you out of your comfort zone and get you the opportunity to travel around the country. Um, sometimes we can do it really well. Sometimes it's hard, just depending upon who the candidates are and where everybody's from. Um, and there's other, obviously, um, things that go into putting a team together um, as well. But you, you definitely get to travel um, week in and week out as you're going to each event. Got it. That sounds pretty cool. So just to reiterate, the, the application process usually starts or the, the open in September of every year. Yes. Yeah, so typically somewhere in that last week of August is when we do open the application annually. Um, and then we always will have a spring deadline, which is typically sometime in November. And then our summer deadline is typically at the very beginning of January. And all of those dates um, to all of those dates will always be on our website. So you can go and check those out um, or mark your calendar or whatever it may be. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I think people assume if it's a summer time or even spring internship that they won't be able to apply until that year. But it sounds like you yep. guys start the year before to prepare. Yeah, it, absolutely. And for our spring applicants, um, because the deadline is so much earlier, um, our goal is typically to always have, make sure all of our offers are out before um, the second week of um, December. And that's partly because we, we do close for the holidays um, mid-December. And so we try to make sure all of our hiring for the spring especially is done by then. Um, but we have a great team in place that we're always constantly making sure we're in communication as many things can change between um, the hiring process starting, maybe when you've been offered something. Um, so sometimes people pull out because um, another opportunity comes along. And so we definitely always want to make sure that we're keeping in touch with everybody because positions can pop up at any point in time. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So can you give us, because you've obviously seen a lot of interns over the years, can you give us a, a couple of traits that you say make interns appealing in the application process versus maybe they a turn off? So we're definitely looking for very engaging, high energy, outgoing individuals to do our internship program. You're gonna constantly be around junior golfers, parents, sponsors, 
tournament committees, volunteers, golf course staff, other stakeholders of the AJGA. We want all of our staff to have an engaging personality to be able to really connect with everybody and always have a smile on our face as our junior golfers are our clients and our customers. So we wanna be able to have a high level of customer service um, for every person, no matter who they are or where they're coming from or what their involvement is with the AJGA. We're also looking for hard workers, um, strong leadership abilities, great teamwork experiences, individuals that definitely have a passion to want to be in the sports industry. You don't necessarily need to be in golf, but you definitely have a desire want to work in sports um, but you also need to have an interest to want to be in the golf industry whether or not you know a whole lot about the golf is okay um, but we definitely want those that don't come in with a strong golf background to at least have the interest to want to learn because once you're doing the internship you're going to be on a golf course you're going to be around it 24 7 so we definitely want you to enjoy the opportunity while you're going through it Turnoffs are hard um, because we definitely want everyone to be genuine. So if you're not being genuine and you're being fake, you're really going to only hurt yourself on the back end um, through everything. And that's not just applying for our internship. That's probably a good life lesson in general um, because we want people to do this internship for the right reasons. If you get in and realize maybe this isn't for you, that, that is okay. And we can adjust and accommodate and do the best that we can. But then you also are taking away an opportunity from somebody that truly feels like this could be their passion or their life goal. So I really think it's important for individuals to really look at what do they want to do? What's their end goal in life? You may or may not know your direct career path, which is totally fine. Um, I still don't necessarily know what I want to do with the rest of my life, but definitely making sure that you are your genuine self and putting your best foot forward is definitely a key thing for any type of interview process that you're going through. Thanks for that overview, Lauren. I think that that's a really helpful tip uh, because I think that's the most nerve wracking for people just to consider applying that knowing what they really need to bring to the table. And they assume if they haven't had any prior work experience. In fact, do a lot of your interns have a lot of work experience before applying or are they typically a mixed bag? I would say it just really depends on what your experience is. Um, we've had high school athletes that maybe get some volunteer or being involved in clubs in college. Um, some do have, I would say a lot of our applicants do have some type of work experience in college, whether it be working at a fast food facility to working in retail to working on campus. Um, it definitely varies. So we do like to see that you kind of do have a strong work ethic, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Um, especially if you're a college athlete, you may not necessarily have that time to have some of those other opportunities or be involved in other things. And that's not going to necessarily hurt you either. We understand what being a college athlete is. That is a job in itself. Um, so we look at a lot of different things when we're examining resumes. Um, just we want to see a well-rounded individual is the key for us moving forward and everything. But I do want to definitely say that please don't get scared if you don't have golf because for us, that's not a deal breaker. We'll definitely be able to teach individuals what they need to know about golf and what they need to know about the industry and then what they need to know about the AJGA. And I would say sometimes between 25 to 40% of our interns each year may not come to the table with a golf, strong golf background. Maybe they have just basic knowledge or an idea of kind of what the game is. Maybe they played in high school, but haven't really done a whole lot with it since then. Maybe they kind of grew up, maybe they just watched the majors or it's all, it all varies. So not everybody that comes to the table was a college athlete or did other types, worked at golf courses or everything like that. So please don't be scared um, because we're here to teach and that's who we are as an organization, as a training organization. Um, but we definitely want people though that do have an interest in wanting to learn because that's definitely a huge factor to keep you engaged throughout the duration of the internship. Awesome. And I just want to reiterate that you mentioned earlier, and I kind of let it pass by, but you were an intern. So it sounds like, I believe I've heard everybody who works at AJGA has gone through the internship process. Correct? Pretty much. Um, we have about 85% of our full-time staff have been an intern of some kind with us at some point in time. Um, for the AJGA, we typically really only hire full-time from our internship program. So we've got a few areas, maybe in our IT department, our property manager, a few different things that wouldn't necessarily mean you have to go through our internship program. Um, but all, 
for the majority, all of our staff has either been a traveling intern or they've worked in house. Awesome, that's really cool. That's very unheard of too, because a lot of places you just don't know if you can get a job after doing their intern program. Yeah. Yeah, and historically we hire annually. So that number that we're hiring annually can change um, and it changes based on the turnover that we have in the organization. And that's something that we embrace because a lot of times when people are moving on from a full-time role with us, they are going on to bid bigger and better things. They may still be continuing into the golf industry. They may be going into other corporate America. Um, maybe they're starting something on their own. We had somebody go on to start her own calligraphy business. We've had people go on to work for um, the hospital in a, maybe a marketing communications role. We have college coaches, but we also have quite a few people um, that work for the LPGA, the USGA, TOR, PGA of America, First Tee, college coaches, executive directors of state and local golf associations, et cetera. So there's lots of different avenues. And that's one of the neat, neat things about the internship is if you really embrace the networking opportunities that are available to you, it, it can really open your door, the doors, um, whether you want to work with us full time or not. Yeah, and I can definitely test that. I work with a couple AJGA interns at LPGA. So they definitely, like you said, open the doors for them to work in other golf companies in the industry as well as, as well as other industries, but the, you know, if they want to stay in golf, that's a, always a, a huge thing on the resume that makes them appealing to other businesses. Well, I appreciate that insight, Lauren. I'm going to switch it up and go to Kyle. Uh, Kyle, as I mentioned, the 2018 intern and uh, Kyle, can you just tell the audience, you know, where you currently live, where you're originally from and uh, what you're currently doing? Yeah, so uh, again, my name is Kyle Brown. Um, I'm from Augusta, Georgia, um, the home of golf. Uh, we have the Masters Tournament, which everyone knows about. Um, I currently live in Orlando, Florida, and I'm currently technically still a law, a law student because I'm studying um, for the bar, which I take on October 13th. So that's what I'm doing right now, and um, that's a little bit about me. That's pretty cool. Law, so... Legal? Are you a, are you a golfer, Kyle? Not necessarily. I try to golf a little bit, uh, but I'm not I'm not that good. I, I spend more time looking for my ball than I do hitting. So uh, I'm trying, but not not necessarily. So that's interesting. So your background, or you're you're going into law. You're not a golfer per se, but you decided to do an AJGA internship. How did you even hear about it? So. I usually um, around the like fall um, fall portion, like when I was an undergrad I went to Albany State University in Georgia, I would just look for different internships because I was just trying to do something to get more experience, um, do something to like travel, um, do something that just was kind of different. You know, I always try to do different things um, growing up. And one of the things that I saw um, was the AJGA, it's the AJGA intern. So I went online, um, I searched it in Google or whatever. Um, I went online and I searched it. And at first I almost didn't apply for it because like we talked about earlier, I didn't have the typical experience as far as, you know, having that golf background. But being from Augusta, golf is in my blood. And I love the game of golf. And I also participated in the first tee program in Augusta. Um, so I just always had this underlying passion for golf. And I just decided to go ahead and apply for the internship. And it was really one of the best decisions um, that I ever made because the, it taught me, um, you know, a different level of work ethic and kind of prepared me for, you know, actually what the law school ground would be like. So that's kind of a little bit about how I, um, you know, found it. And I'm glad I did, honestly. So how did you feel about going through the initial application process? I'm sure it was unlike any experience you had before. Yeah, it was, it was, it was different. It was a different process. Uh, I actually, before the summer before I had worked at um, the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, so that was the government. And I thought that that process was, you know, tough. But the AJGA process was a little bit was a little bit a step above, but I'm glad it went that way because it allowed us to like have a really, really, really strong team. Um, 
I felt good because I took a Wonderlick test. Uh, a lot of the NFL quarterbacks take those tests in order to, you know, get drafted or whatever. So I, it kind of, I never been a big athlete, so I felt good. I was telling a lot of people like, man, I got a chance to take a Wonderlick test and just do a lot of different things. And, you know, I had an opportunity to just talk to a lot of different people um, that worked at the AJGA even before I was selected as an intern. So it kind of puts you in a position if you were like, uh, Ms. Lawrence said, if you like embrace it, um, you kind of setting yourself up to already have a relationship with everybody once you get started. So that's why I'm kind of glad that it went that way because a lot of times with a lot of the internships, you don't necessarily, you might have an internship um, interview with one person and then you do the in the interview and then after the interview, it just seems like everything is completely different. But with the AJGA, it kind of lets you know where they, where they stood before you even got hired. Um, and so it, it really it really made me uh, tough. And, you know, for other, you know, uh, later interviews that I had, man, I would go in and I'm like, oh, these are nothing, you know, so, yeah. Well, you seem like a pretty confident guy. So, you know, if you were, if this was different for you, I'm sure – it'll be unique for others. And, and like you said, you're correct. You know, a lot of internships and even jobs, you don't get to know the people that you're going to be working with prior to starting it. So you don't really have a, you know, a real experience, but it sounds like coming in and having that in-person experience kind of really prepared you for what you were going to actually experience. Right. It really did. Well, that's good. So you got the internship. Where did you end up? What did you do? So funny story, when I got the call, um, I don't know, I think it was Miss Lauren that called me. I mean, I, I think it was, but I got the call. I was actually on spring break. I think I was on spring break and I was in Vegas and my trip had just came to an end. And I was just like, man, I'm going back to school. I haven't got that call. I probably didn't get it. But on my last day, I got a call just saying, hey, you know, we just want to make sure we let you know that you did a great job. You got an offer. So fast forward, I accepted the offer. Um, I was ended up graduating and it was weird because my break between the internship um, was my transition into going into law school. So I literally graduated and then I had the internship process and then I ended up going to law school. But, you know, within those two, like two months, um, it was just really, really, really amazing. Uh, we did a lot of different things and I'm, like I said, I'm from Georgia, but um, I didn't actually end up in the Georgia area. I had never been past Louisiana, which was really cool. So I ended up, you know, we ended up going, you know, to Louisiana. We started in Georgia, um, went to Florida, went to Louisiana, and then we just worked our way all the way through West. So we went to New Mexico, we went to Arizona, um, and then we ended up, we went to Texas, and we also went to uh, California. So it was just this experience that I had never, you know, dreamed that I would have because I'm, you know, I'm a country boy. So just being able to go out west and, you know, be on my Instagram or whatever and showing people, you know, from back home, like, they like, man, this guy's really, I don't know what's gotten into him, but he's doing really good. So it was a, it was a great, you know, great traveling experience. And uh, since then, I, I haven't stopped traveling. So it really set me up. That's pretty cool. So. You didn't stay in one place, you went to different states. So what were you doing in those different states and what role did you have? Were you an event person or a communications person? So I was on the uh, operations team and I basically uh, also was the finance captain for my team. So I really had two roles. So what happens is you, you get assigned to either communications, which you will kind of, um, you know, do event photography, do interviews, um, you know, just doing all the different things to make sure that, you know, the, the event is actually, you know, running, you know, correctly to make sure that it's getting communicated to everyone who's watching it. Um, you capturing all the moments and then you have the operations team, which um, we were more so focused on making sure the course, um, making sure that all of the parents, the junior golfers, um, and just communicating back and forth to make sure that the event ran properly as far as everything that people needed, you know, boots on the ground. And then um, you also had within each um, team, you had people that were basically leads and different things. And my, my um, particular position was 
finance captain. So I was in charge of the AJGA credit card, uh, which was really, really cool. I was also just in charge of making sure that everything that we needed as far as gas, as far as just keeping, um, you know, um, in track of, of, of our receipts and just different things like that. That was my role. Um, so we basically, we basically all kind of pitched in and, you know, sometimes I'll be behind the camera, but for the most part, I would be on the course, you know, working on pace of play, um, and just making sure that all the, the parents, the golfers and everybody on our team and our staff, uh, had everything that they needed. Uh, so that, that's kind of what I, you know, what I did. That's really cool. And that's, I mean, that's huge because, you know, in college, although you manage your own stuff to be able to manage yeah. our business, like you said, have a credit card that's not yours. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. So can you really, take us through just a typical day at an event? What kind of, what time did you start? How did the day go? How long did you guys stay at the uh, tournament site? Just walk us through that. Yeah. So like, uh, like Ms. Lauren says, so usually what will happen is, so, um, I would say wake up call me. I'm an early riser, always, always have been. So we would probably get up um, around 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, you know, it's a weekly thing. So from week to week, we're going to a different city. But for the first day or whatever that we actually have a tournament, we would get up in the morning. Um, then once we get up, we would probably all have some breakfast or whatever. We stay with, uh, you know, host families who are really, really nice. And a lot of them had really, really nice houses. So we would eat breakfast or we sometimes we would grab something at the course. And then as soon as we get to the course, we'll kind of look at what our assignments were for the day. Um, and then once we figured out what our assignments was, we would break off into groups. So you will have different teams. So you might have one one team just making sure that, you know, all of the holes on the golf course were cut properly according to, you know, everything that, you know, the tournament directors have already set out. You will know, be pacing that stuff off. Then you have certain people that will just um, make sure that all of the coolers, all of the fruit, all of the different things um, that we had would just be in the right place, fully stocked to make sure like, you know, the, the junior golfers stay hydrated and to make sure that staff is hydrated, you know, then you will have someone setting the tees out. So you will have someone that makes sure that all of the tees are set properly and, you know, facing the right direction. Um, you have somebody that's checking all of the different ropes that's, um, you know, surrounding the course, you know, making sure everything's neat and tight. And then you will have someone that's, um, you know, working an iPad or working a, uh, a tablet to make sure that when the junior golfers arrive to the designated holes that we know, you know, what type of equipment we're using. So we're staying updated and we know what type of, you know, clothing that they're wearing and we're just making sure that they're OK. Um, so you basically will, will have all of those jobs. And then what will end up happening is we would just rotate on a daily basis. So I might be checking hole locations one day and then the next day I might just be on um coolers or something different so every day was a uh, a different day um in your typical hours they go by really fast because you're, you're constantly moving but your typical hours will probably be from like 7 30 just making sure we're at the course to probably about 5 30 6 30 but you are of course you're going to get um time to eat lunch and then you're kind of working with your team so it goes by really fast that sounds really cool. So it's, it's like every day it's a little bit different because you're not doing the same old thing every yeah. time you go. That's pretty cool. And, and you obviously learned every aspect of putting on a tournament. Right? Yes. yes. So can you share with us the most, what you, I guess, either a story or what you enjoyed the most about your internship or something that you really thought was the, the, the best part? Um, honestly, like, I think I think just being able to uh, it's a lot of like stories, but I think the best part for me was the intern recruitment um, weekend. It's the actual part um, like Miss Lauren talked about before you actually get you know on the road. Um, that's probably the first thing that I would say because you get an opportunity to meet so many different people from so many different backgrounds, and I think that that's the time when everyone is the most nervous because literally it's a room and it's like feels like 150 people in a room or you know just a room with a bunch of tables when when I took it um in 2018 but it was just a room with just a lot of different people and you know we we have you know a, a opportunity to they they display your headshot so I, like Ms. Lawrence said I want best headshot um 
but they display your headshot. So they say, this is a good headshot. And then they, they probably pull one back from a couple of years and say, this is a terrible headshot. But they just, they're just teaching you just the different etiquette and things like that. And then they have an opportunity for us to work together in groups. So they're just figuring out our personalities. Uh, so just trying to figure out, you know, uh, Kyle, he's very energetic. He's an early riser. So I should probably put him around a, a bunch of people that'll calm him down a little bit and to mellow him out and have someone on his team that's just like him. So they, they're kind of figuring out, you know, the perfect team. So you get to work with a lot of different people and that's really cool. And then at the end, we had an opportunity to basically do something like Shark Tank. Um, my team also won that as well. We, we were like racking up everything, but you have an opportunity to come up with an idea um, that's kind of golf related, but you, you basically are pitching it to some of the um, – AJGA full-time employees so you do that so that was kind of my first favorite part and my second favorite part is just the end of the internship because you kind of get to look back like where you started from you know I was very nervous um, because I didn't really have the, the best background in golf um, I didn't really know a lot of different things like pace of play you know but they, it's like a school for golf so they, they basically school you this whole time and then when you get to the like the last day of the internship you just get the opportunity to look back and just say, man, I really came a long way. Um, it's bittersweet because you're leaving. You know, you don't want to leave your team. But, you know, it's just an opportunity to really celebrate, like, everything that you accomplish, everything that you learn, and just kind of, you know, be able to channel all that moving forward. So That sounds awesome. So on the flip side, what would you say was one of the most challenging things you experienced during the internship? Well, I got a funny story about that. So – I like to do a lot of things, um, and I like to get things done timely. But, you know, my granddad, uh, he, he's from Augusta. He calls it a lazy man's load. So, like, when you go to the grocery store and, you know, you got 10 bags and you only want to make one trip. So that was, that, that's, that was kind of my thing. You know, the days that I would be on coolers, uh, you know, you're trying to load your, you're trying to load your, your um, golf cart down because that's how you're delivering your coolers so you're trying to load your golf cart down with as many coolers as possible because you don't want to be the person on the team that's always last it's like we can't get the tournament started because Kyle's just he's he's terrible on coolers so one day I I loaded my golf cart up I probably had about six coolers I mean I had three in in there with me one on the front one on the top and two on the back just load it down um I had my headphones in, um, had my music blasting, and I turned the corner, and all my coolers just fell all over the ground. And when I looked up to get everything, I was in the midst of a bunch of parents. So they're just looking at me like, what is this guy doing? And then I got one of the parents. He was trying to help me. So he's all of the ice was in the mud. He's pressing it, pushing it back in the coolers. And I just hear somebody on the, like, walkie-talkie saying, um, 15 minutes to start, I hadn't got no coolers out. But that was really challenging for me, you know, because I come from a place where it's like, you know, the inner city where it seems like, you know, you kind of have to do a lot of things on your own. Um, and I took that mentality, you know, starting week one, starting week two, like, man, I got to do it on my own. But I will say we got all of those coolers out in time because everyone on my team pitched in like, man, don't worry about it. We'll refill them. And literally six coolers. We had, you know, six teammates. Everybody got a cooler. Everybody put a cooler down. So, you know, it was just an opportunity to learn, like, you know, it's okay to rely on other people. Um, and I think that that was my hardest, you know, thing. Like, I got to rely on other people. But, you know, I, I will say I had a great team and a lot of people that, you know, helped me when I got myself into, you know, those tight, tight situations. That is a great story. And you're right. I mean, it, it's hard sometimes to ask for help or to rely on others, especially if that's how you were raised. And so that's where, you know, internships and jobs kind of open that up for you to say, you know what, I need to sometimes ask for help. That's pretty cool. Yes. So yes. with all the skills you learned through this internship and connections you've made with your fellow interns and, and people like Lauren Shelley, how do you apply that now? Because you're obviously in law school, you're about to take the bar, which is kind of exciting. How are you applying those things now? Um, I would just say the work ethic part, you know, the AJGA, you know, um, like Ms. Lauren said, they want people that, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have a background, have to have a background in golf, 
but you just have to be willing to learn and you have to have the work ethic. And that's the same thing that I took and I was able to apply to law school, graduated in three years um, and was able to now take the bar. I'm applying the same work ethic, you know, that I learned, you know, getting up early, you know, making sure that everything that I do, you know, is to the T, you know, making sure that, you know, I'm to the T when I'm doing, you know, different things and just making sure that, you know, when I'm working with other people, I always give it my all because you never know what things are going to lead to. I would say another one of the things that I learned from the internship was just, you know, making sure that you, you know, put yourself out there and talking to people. You know, week one, I was very, very shy. Um, I didn't want to, you know, talk to the parents. But what I started to realize is like, oh, man, these parents are on this circuit that I'm on. So I'm going to have to talk to them eventually. So I might as well just jump in because, you know, we would start off in Florida and end up in California and I would have some of the same parents, you know, come and you know follow me along the way so you know by building relationships with parents and building relationships with the junior golfers a lot of times I would be in situations where I would have to you know give them instructions or you know need their help sometimes so you know by building those relationships I could call on them and lean on them you know later down the road and say hey man can you go you know check that check this out for me how's it looking down there they'll say Kyle it's okay you know so just you know setting myself up and I think that that has helped me um, you know, transition into being a student. And um, also, you know, when I got towards the end of my law school career, I felt like, you know, I had a lot of different things, you know, that, you know, I learned from the AJGA and just grown through, um, you know, being in law school. So, you know, I, just start, I decided to start my own consultant, like legal business, um, which is virtual and kind of apply some of the same principles as far as, you know, reaching out to different clients, reaching out to different people, um, and really applying all of the tactics that I learned from the AJGA to my business. So I think that, you know, being able to, you know, do those things and also learning how to budget, you know, I was able to, I was getting a paycheck, uh, but I was having to budget, you know, and a lot of the, a lot of times, you know, I just kind of stuck to, you know, the basics, but a lot of that money that I was able to make from the AJGA, um, it see, was the seed capital that helped me start my business. Um, so it's really, it really was just a great opportunity all around, you know, um, you know, for my, you know, personality to, to help me become better, um, for my, um, you know, people skills, my work ethic, and financially, you know, it was really, you know, a well-rounded experience. Yeah, and Kyle, you got me wanting to do an AJDA internship. <laughs> you got a lot of that. Like Ms. Lawrence says, it's never too late. I know that's right. Uh, well, I appreciate all that insight because I think that's really important for people watching this to know that the AJD internship is not just about golf. It obviously applies to anything in your life. And obviously you're using it beautifully with your law degree that you're about to get and, and now that you're about to get into your, your business that you started. So congratulations on all of that. So I want to wrap things up because you guys have given so much information. I think people just need to digest all of this. I am going to ask both of you, one on, each of you, to share one last tidbit for those watching to take away if they want to consider doing an AJGA internship. So, Lauren, you might share one little tip to the audience. The biggest thing that I would just say is don't just put yourself in a tiny little box because you don't necessarily have a lot of sports or you have a lot of golf experience. Um, this internship as a whole can totally broaden your horizons. Um, and I echo a lot of what Kyle just mentioned about the opportunities and the skills and things like that that you can take away that are going to be very beneficial to you, no matter what type of job, no matter what type of industry uh, you go into um, in your career. It could also help you be a better friend, a better teammate, a better parent one day, a bet maybe a better son or daughter, um, because you're just learning a lot of life skills that maybe you don't recognize it while you're in it, but when you sit back after the internship and digest everything, you're really able to take kind of inventory of what you learned and how those experiences can help you later in life. And hearing things like that from Kyle completely warms my heart that even though golf isn't necessarily the avenue he's going down right now, he's been able to take away so many different things that are helping him in his current situation um, and will help him as he continues in um, his law business. Definitely. Um, what about you, Kyle? What's one little tidbit you would give a person listening today about the internship and why they should consider it? 
I would just say, you know, it's very, very important to just put yourself out there in the trial because you never know what things will turn into. Um, you know, you know, a couple, two years later, uh, I tried and I got selected. And, uh, you know, I'm still using, you know, everything that I learned from the AJGA in my daily life and moving forward. And one of my teammates, um, she actually, you know, got a job with the Big Ten Network. So she's in places and spaces that my company, you know, looks to go to. Um, so I've been able to network with her and just get different advice and to network with her network. And um, so I think that, you know, just put yourself out there. Um, like Ms. Lawrence said, you do have to, you don't necessarily have to have a passion, um, you know, and know a lot about golf. But if you have the willingness to learn about golf, if you are, you know, humble yourself and just have the willingness to want to be a part of it, um, then you'll be, you know, perfectly fine. And, you know, really um, the sky's the limit for whatever you may want to do in life. Uh, whether it's in the sports world, whether it's in golf, or like myself, whether it's even in the legal field. So, yeah, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and, you know, you know, much success. Thank you, Kyle. And so, Lauren, would you like to uh, tell us all again when, uh, what, where to find your applications and uh, when the deadline is for the applications? Absolutely. So you can find all the information about our internship program as a whole, as well as the online application at www.ajga.org slash careers. And we have a whole careers page completely dedicated to it. And then if you're interested in applying for whether it's our spring season or our summer season, two deadlines, November 13th or January 8th of 2021. Great, thanks for that. And, you know, good luck, Kyle, for your uh, upcoming bar exam. And thank you, Lauren. I know you'll get some great applicants.